I didn't feel like making this video. And truthfully, I don't feel like making any of my videos. But I've made over a thousand and I keep making them regularly. This is one of the reasons I think that I make more progress than some other people. Okay. And I, I see that a lot of people that I've worked with over the years, I frequently hear this excuse that, oh, I just wasn't in the flow. I just didn't feel like doing it. I just, it wasn't, it just wasn't quite right. The conditions weren't quite right. So that's why I didn't do it. That's why I haven't done it yet. And this is living essentially from a vic as a victim of life. So let me explain. Being a victim of life means that you have to feel good before you do right. You have to feel good before you do right. That is a victim of life. That means you have to wait until conditions are perfect. You have to feel great before you're willing to do purposefully, to, to act purposefully, to act intentionally, live the, you know, the, do the thing that you know is going to benefit your, your life or your work. If you want to live into your potential, which is unlimited, but if you want to live more and more into your potential, you have to flip the equation around. You have to do right before you feel good. Okay. So now, now that I'm, you know, two minutes into this video, I feel a little bit better, you know, because now I'm in, in it. Actually, this is this today is a, is a pretty good example. Of, 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 of this exact, of this idea, because behind me, you see my white screen. Um, I'm going to do another video at some point uh, about green screens and white screens. So I just got this uh, white screen and I am able to make cool backgrounds um, using zoom. And I'm, you know, in future videos, I'm going to be broadcasting on Facebook live through zoom. I just discovered that zoom, uh, even at the lowest uh, um, monthly rate at fifteen dollars a month, can broadcast live on Facebook and YouTube using a virtual background. If you just have a white sheet behind you or a green sheet or whatever sheet you want behind you, that's a solid color. Um, you don't even have to you don't even have to iron it anyway. That's a, that's a for a future video. But the Zoom uh, streaming wasn't working right now, so I was trying to figure it out for like ten minutes, and I'm like, wow, that's a great example. Conditions are not optimal, but I'm going to go live anyway with this funny looking white background. Okay. That's not ironed, right? I'm, I'm here anyway. I'm delivering the message. Okay. Rather than delaying, delaying, and then eating into my next thing that I want to do because a lot of our delays are honestly not, not important. A lot of the things that are not right are not important. You are simply called to show up and do the right thing. When I say the right thing, I mean the thing that you consciously know would be good for you right now. It would be good for your purpose, showing up and not shrinking from your purpose. Okay, now let me give you a couple of tips that help you to do right and then feel good because that's hard. That's essentially, it's, it's, that's why many of us are held back because we got to feel good before we do right. No, you do right, and then you and then you truly feel good. You feel great for a long time. Um, so here's a couple of tips. You can first use your your mind and your heart to feel a little bit better. You don't have to feel great. You don't conditions don't have to be great. You use your mind and heart to feel a little bit better, and then do right immediately. So here's what I mean. Uh, you may have heard me if you've watched my videos. You may have heard me talk about my energy reboot. Well, uh, if you don't know, just Google energy reboot, George cow, and you'll, you'll find my blog post on that. But I do that multiple times a day. I did that just before doing this live video and it's basically intentional breathing and, uh, for four breaths, it literally takes me less than 30 seconds, about 30 seconds to do my energy reboot. So doing that made me feel a little bit better. And then I immediately went live without waiting, without, saying, oh, I gotta, I, I better postpone this until later or tomorrow when the live streaming is working. No, I'm just gonna do it with this, this silly background, 
Okay. So think, think good, feel a little bit better as a result, immediately do right, and then you will feel great afterwards. Like I said, I never feel like doing these videos. I mean, honestly, if I, you know, if I had a um, million dollars, which is what I would need in savings to, to retire, not there yet. Um, the sooner I get there, the sooner all my stuff will be free. Okay, so help me get there. Uh, but once I get to a million dollars, then you know, I'll I can live off of interest, and uh, you know, I'd still do I'd still sell some things that are lower cost maybe. But um, but yeah, if I if I got there, then I probably wouldn't do as many videos, and I wouldn't write as many blog posts. Hopefully by that point I would do it anyway because I know it's it's of service to the world. But what I, maybe what I should say if I had if I had a million bucks in savings, and if I if if the world were all completely healed and uh, all of you don't need any transformation, then I wouldn't do these videos. Okay, I wouldn't you know I wouldn't do it. It's not I don't do it because it feels good. I don't do it because I'm like oh my god I so love doing videos. I so love writing blog posts. No, that stuff is painful. Everything I do is painful, right? But not painful. I mean, but I what I've learned is I've learned to reframe the pain. Just like guess what? Who who likes going to the gym? Nobody likes exercise. Nobody likes exercise. Like it doesn't feel good to exercise. Well, of course, why do they why do people still exercise? Why do why do athletes still achieve greater and greater, you know, fitness and 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 you know, keep themselves fit? Well, it's because they've learned to reframe the pain. The pain they've reframed it as joy as courage as adventure as as fitness and i've learned to refrain my reluctance to show up as this is going to help you right this is going to serve you um this will help me connect with you better this will uh help me explore what i freaking want to say <laughs> I, I figure it out as i'm live i figure out what i want to say to you okay i don't figure everything out i mean i I, nowadays, I actually write a blog post before I, I come up live. But when I first started doing these videos, I only had like three things, basic, quick bullet points that I outlined. And then I, I went live and then I just talked. And then I figured it out along the way. And back then, I, was, I wasn't doing live videos. I was doing like pre-recorded. But I forced myself to do it within half an hour. Otherwise, it will drag on for hours, right? Force myself, okay, you get three takes or get however many takes you want. But you get it in half an hour. So, hey. It's all, it's, you know, you're 25 minutes into this and you've already done five takes, fine. The sixth take, that's gotta be it. You're, 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 and, and now of course doing live videos is a lot easier because you only have, I only have one take for my live videos. So it, it, cre it uh, solves the perfectionism and it's okay. It's okay to figure out what you want to say in front of your audience. That's another, it's okay. I mean, you're still watching. You're probably annoyed at me for trying to figure out what I want to say, but you still watch video after video after video after video after video, even though I try to figure out what I want to say in front of you. But I, I'm doing this as an example, right? But he, the, the truth is that as you try to figure out what you want to say, you've already thought things out more than anybody in your audience or most people in your audience. So even you're trying to figure it out it sounds interesting. It seems interesting for your audience. Trust me. Just try it out, okay? You're going to judge yourself, you know, to, to, to the end of the earth, you're going to keep judging yourself? Doesn't matter. Your audience doesn't judge you like you judge you, right? So this is just a little bit on, on the content stuff. But the main message, let me come back to it, is you, can't, you got to stop the madness of living from feel good before doing right. It is madness. You can't, you can't wait until conditions are perfect. You can't wait until um, you, know, uh, you feel like in the flow before you show up. You have to show up and then find the flow while you are there showing up. And then you will feel good afterwards. You'll feel great afterwards. It doesn't matter how badly you do things. This is so important. This is so important. It truly does not matter how badly you do things. It does not matter how badly you've written. It doesn't matter how bad your video is. It doesn't matter because if you're consistent with it, you're going to get better. And the people, who are meant for you are going to stay no matter how bad you are. They're going to how how poorly you've written, how poorly your video is. They're going to stay because they're meant for you. Because there's an energy signature that they just don't know what it is, but they will stay. Okay, 
and they will watch video after video. They'll read your blog post after blog post. And if you keep staying consistent, you'll get more and more people who sent your energy signature and they're just going to stay and your audience is going to grow and your business is going to grow and your livelihood will thrive. Simple as that. Show up badly. Don't worry about feeling good before you do right. You do right and you'll feel good. And to help you with that, you can take a minute. That's it. Don't take another half a day to try to feel good before you show up. It's stupid. Now, sorry, I don't, didn't mean to say that, but it's, it's a stupid strategy, I should say. Okay. And you are, um, you've been tricked by your ego mind to say that, no, 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 you got to spend the next two hours feeling good and then maybe you'll show up. No, you spend one minute. You spend one minute to, to do affirmations or do your meditation, pray, journal, one minute. Okay. I do it for half a minute. You could do it for one minute. Okay, fine. I'll give you five minutes. But no more than five minutes, otherwise it drags on. Do whatever you need to do for five minutes. Do your yoga, do, listen to music, dance around, okay? Do some stretches, do your energy reboot, however you do it. Affirmations, meditation, prayer, journaling, however, dancing, whatever. Go for a two minute walk around the block or five minute walk, five minutes, that's all you get. And then you show up. You just show up and do it badly, okay? You do it badly. Can you do it badly? I can do it badly. If I can do it badly, you could certainly do it badly, okay? Just do it badly. Show up badly. And then as you show up badly and stay with it, you'll find the flow, and then you'll feel great afterwards. Like, I feel, I feel okay now, right? I feel okay. Did you like doing it? Now it seems to be okay. And the last thing I want to share um, is a very simple uh, kind of three-part framework. Plan, practice, and praise. All right, it's very simple. Plan means you visualize what is the right thing to do and create a plan for it, create a, create a regular rhythm for, for, for doing right, for showing up. Okay, plan. Plan what's the right thing for you to do that will help you reach your goals, whatever that may be. And then create a rhythm, create a plan that's going to, where you, if you show up regularly, you will get good results probably. Okay, so plan. And then practice means you just practice the plan. Practice means that it, practice is not performance. Practice is not perfect. Practice is just honoring the process, honoring the plan. You just show up for your plan, like a plan to do this, you know, these videos on Tuesdays and Fridays between 12 and 1. So I show up and do it no matter how I feel. No matter how I feel. Now, I occasionally, of course, if you're like really sick, okay, then you gotta, you got to rest. You got to, you know, or if there's a, but I, I even hesitate to give you that excuse because your mind is so brilliant at making excuses. And you will literally manifest illness if, that, if you allow that to be an excuse. You will manifest family emergencies. You will manifest phone calls that you have to take. You'll manifest, oh my God, I just realized I had to go do this first. You'll manifest those things if you allow those things to be excuses. You'll manifest them. It, you're, you're, you're a genius. You will literally manifest that in, in your life. I don't know how it works. I truly don't know how it works, but I've seen it again and again. People manifest all kinds of things as excuses for showing up and doing the right thing. And I don't want you to show up and grit your teeth and like, oh, this is so much suffering. I'm doing it anyway. No, you just take a minute or five to just... Breathe, calm down, and realize everything's going to be okay, even if you show up badly. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. Even if you show up badly for days and years, things will still grow. Things will still grow. Things will still go your way. Okay? You just got to show up. Follow your plan. And you could tweak your plan over time, but don't make excuses after you've made your plan. You got to plan, and then you got to practice. Honor the process, honor the practice of just, this is practice, just gonna show up. I don't care if it's perfect or it's not gonna be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. And truly, the whole thing is perfect. All of life is perfect. Your whole, your whole ups and downs, the whole, the whole thing, and once you die and have a life review, you'll see that the whole thing was perfect. The whole thing is perfect. So don't try to be perfect now. Just realize that it's all perfect anyway. So plan, practice, and praise. Once you practice, praise God or praise yourself, whatever you believe in. Pray, you know, in other words, celebrate. 
and this has been this has been proven. Habit creation experts have shown us that if you celebrate immediately after you do the thing that you want to create a habit in, you reinforce your in your mind. Ah, this is this is a good thing to do. So plan, practice, praise immediately. Praise like after this, I'm like, oh yes, I did it. Even though I didn't feel like it, even though the the, the streaming didn't work, so this the silly green screen, uh, white screen showed up. Praise anyway, praise. Okay, so that's all I want to say today. I hope this was encouraging and helpful and. It's time for you to go and plan, practice, and praise. Remember, don't feel good before doing right. Do not feel good before doing right. You, you do right, and then you feel good, and maybe I'll give you one to five minutes to quickly do, a, do some kind of reset, breathe or whatever, yoga or whatever you need to do to reset, and then show up. You only get five minutes. Whatever, whatever you scheduled, you, you planned, hey, you're going to do your video, you get five minutes to reset yourself, okay? I do it for half a minute. You get five, okay. So um, I want to thank those who are commenting here, uh, Laura. This concept is actually radical, radical in the sense that it's authentic and necessary. Yeah, absolutely. Remember the, the the normal the normal life the normal way everybody goes is they have to feel good before they do right, and because they feel guilty. Okay, here's the, the other nuance: because they feel guilty not doing right because they don't feel good. So they don't do right. So they feel guilty, and then they try to drown out or escape the guilt or drown out their guilt by doing even worse stuff: junk food, pornography, you know, social media, you know, taking it out on other people, um, just being a grump, or just you know, drugs, um, whatever, uh, all kinds of bad stuff. It's because of trying to escape the guilt of not doing the right thing when all you need was a commitment. To say, I just realized I'm not going to feel good unless, until I do right. That's truly what feels good. Not the drugs, not the porn, not the junk food, not the fill in the blank for, for your addiction. Okay? De procrastination. Even something as simple as I'm just going to listen to music. I'm just going to, even self-care can become just a tool of procrastination. You know I believe in self-care because I taught a whole class called Joyful Productivity that was a lot about self-care. But this, your self-care has got to be in your plan. You can't just say, well, I don't feel like it right now, so I'm going to go do some self-care. That's just procrastination. That's just you feeling guilty of not doing right, so you're just soothing yourself. You're making it an excuse. It, no, you got to just give yourself up to five minutes. I give myself half a minute. You can give yourself five minutes to just use your brilliant mind and heart to just reset and show up feeling badly or feeling, you know, not badly, but... You show up not feeling optimal, doing badly, okay, doing the right thing, but doing it poorly is totally fine, totally fine, okay. So, um, and then you you you've just practiced, and then you can praise, and you'll feel great, and the rest of the day you'll feel great, and then that is a virtuous cycle, you know. The vicious cycle is I don't feel good, so I'm gonna do I'm not gonna do right, so I'm gonna feel guilty, and I'm gonna numb myself with addictions. That's a vicious cycle. You go to hell that way. Right, the virtual cycles. I don't. I don't. I know. I don't feel good, but I'm going to quickly reset, and I'm going to do the right thing. How, however much, however poorly I do it, I'll do the right thing. Okay, however poorly, and then I feel good, and that makes me actually reinforce doing the right thing will feel better. And it's just the whole thing. It's a virtual cycle up to heaven. You create heaven on earth in your life, and in other people's lives. The people who touch you, whose lives you touch, you create. You help them to create heaven on earth. Do the right thing, and then you'll feel great, and then you'll just keep doing it, okay? Break the cycle and just do right poorly. Do the right thing poorly, and then you'll feel good. And, you, and, you, and then over time, you'll actually become more skillful at doing the right thing, and that's the, that's the amazing thing about it. So thank you, um, Captain, for your comment there, and uh, Tucker, thank you for your comment, and Suzanne. And Nina for joining. Thank you. And Sharon and um, Steph for joining as well. Thank you all for joining. And, and um, I now it's your turn. Go and reset yourself. Give yourself one to well, plan, practice, pray. So plan whatever rhythm is you believe will be sustainable for you to pursue your goals. And then um, and then when it's time to work your plan, when it's time you scheduled or whenever you, you are working your plan, you know it's not going to feel good. 
You know it's not going to be optimal, but you do it anyway, okay? And you'll feel great. All right. Take care. Have a great day.